In this video, we're going to look at the new Python library from Oracle for connecting to an Oracle database, both on premises and in the cloud. This is a new library and it's replacing an existing library that's been about for some time called CX Oracle. And many of you may have actually come across that in, in the Python world. So what they have actually done is they've come along and kind of rewritten that and kind of built upon uh, a lot of the features within that and created a, a kind of a brand new library uh, called Oracle DB. Now CX Oracle kind of existed uh, for a time outside of the kind of Oracle Corporation. You know, it was kind of built and maintained by a particular developer. And, you know, uh, when he joined Oracle, that came under the kind of the auspices of Oracle Corporation. And we still have the same developer who's kind of working on the new Oracle DB. So based on this is that no new development will, will, will be done with CX Oracle. Everything new will be going into the Oracle DB. Now, there's a few things we need to keep in mind is that, well, we need to install it and the, the name you need to install is Oracle DB, but everything you'll see within the documentation um, or in blog posts by Oracle and, and stuff like that, their naming convention is going to be Python hyphen Oracle DB. But, you know, the reality is that Python hyphen bit doesn't actually exist in anything that you need to do. So let's get in and have a look at a few examples. We're going to have a quick look at setting up some Python connections to your Oracle databases. The first one we're going to look at is actually just going to be using the original or kind of the, the previous uh, Python library using CX Oracle. And what we can do is we can do a kind of a straightforward connection on some of those and being able to kind of print out some of the details off it and query the data. Now you're going to have C similarity in the data across all the different connections because I just have it replicated across the different databases that I have. So this is you're running against an autonomous database. Now because we're using CX Oracle you do need to have uh, Oracle client installed, uh, your wallet downloaded and configured and set up and on the paths and various different things and it can be a little bit cumbersome to be able to to set that up. Now with the new Python library, you don't need any of that. It's a lot simpler, a lot more straightforward to use, and which means we can actually deploy our code in a kind of a, a wider range of environments with significantly less overhead and, and less hassle kind of involved in it. So this is querying uh, one of my cloud databases. We're connecting into it and we're pulling data back. So uh, like I said before, is we're going to be using some of this code across all the different examples so you can actually see how it actually looks. And then we'll come along and we we'll just close the, the, the cloud uh, uh, or the connection to the cloud database. And in this one, what we're going to do is I'm going to collect, connect to my local database, which is going to be running on Docker. You know, it's, this could be in your local data center, you know, or you could actually use the same approach if you're connecting to AWS or kind of some of those other ones. And instead of putting in local host, you are putting in the IP address of your, of your database. So this would be like in your pluggable kind of database scenario. And what we can do is we can actually, you know, specify that out and we can actually kind of run that and being able to connect to it and pull the data back, which is all good and what we want to be able to do. Now, in order to use the new uh, Oracle DB uh, library connect to the database, there's a couple of things we need to remember. One is we no longer need the, the Oracle client software to be installed. Uh, but we still need access to the wallet files. So this is where, you know, talk nicely to your DBA that can download the wallets uh, and you can unzip it and you have access to the vast majority of the data that you have in there. The other difference that we actually have is really to do with the connections. All right. So with the connections, see up here, like I've kind of, I have named parameters. So username, and password, what the, the server is. But within the server, I've actually embedded some additional information, right? So for example, like the port number and things like that, right? And if we can specify it. So under the CX Oracle, you could specify that as a string. You know, I could actually embed username and password within that string if I really wanted to, you know, just to make it all one. Now, 
as we know, kind of concatenating strings and passing those parameters is not a good idea. So that kind of the same principle has been brought forward into the Oracle DB, the new Oracle DB Python library, is that all the parameters that goes into a connection needs to be named. So explicitly kind of named in this particular case. So this is where like, you know, for example, I've pulled out port into this particular example, because this shows, you know, that if I actually used the previous string, I would have gotten an error where I needed to actually specify it uh, separately. So we just have a few kind of descriptor uh, ones there to see, do we have a connection? Are we using the Tink client? And that's the other thing with, with Oracle uh, DB library is using the Tink client. We're not using the Tink uh, uh, database uh, client. So if we wanted to use Oracle client, you know, to do some of that and say client side processing and other kind of scenarios on it, uh, we could, and I'll show you how to do that. So if that's kind of necessary for your applications on it. But in most cases, the, the tin client will actually be kind of suffice for, for what you actually need. It's only when you get into more advanced scenarios that you'll want to go for maybe the, the tin client. So we get to see what it is and we get to see what kind of the version of the database. And then, you know, we can query the data and, you know, what tables do we have and, and we can close it. Now, as a little tip on on this is sometimes, you know, to minimize the amount of code or can you know, potentially to leave certain connections or potential like um, uh, courses open to the database is sometimes we just want to open them, get the data we want and close them automatically. So taking the code that I've kind of shown above in the previous two kind of cells, what we can do is we can replace it with this kind of simple bit of code. And what it effectively does, and it tells us that, well, we still have a connection, but the cursor is closed. It's disconnected. It automatically disconnects for us. So with con cursor, we're going to execute the query. We're going to print out the rows. And when it's finished that unit of code, it closes the cursor automatically for us. But the connection is still open because we might want to do some other things with it. All right. So so that's a very simple of kind of using the, the new a connection to connect to a local database or a database that you can maybe access uh, using you know an IP address okay so particularly the name the parameters need to be explicitly kind of stated now in most probably scenarios in your programming environments you may already have that done uh, in which case there's very little kind of programming changes you need to do apart from bringing in the new library OK, that, that's kind of it. But if you have the scenario where you can concatenate things and kind of uh, into different strings, then you, know, you are going to have to kind of break that out and move things along a wee bit. Now, for looking at the, at the autonomous database, so whether this is autonomous transaction processing, autonomous, autonomous uh, data warehousing, or just autonomous database, and in general, is there's, there's a few kind of things we need to kind of keep in mind. Now, under the previous scenario, it's kind of easy. Once you get your wallet, download your wallet and being able to uh, put that into your uh, into the appropriate directory on, underneath your Oracle client software, we could actually connect to it relatively easy. Now, that is, doesn't work or isn't necess necessarily suitable for every development environment you know, when you're developing your Python applications. We want to avoid those scenarios. And when we're getting into doing things like that, there's a few things we need to do uh, and, and do slightly differently. So this is an example of connecting to the same cloud database that I connected to previously, uh, is there's a few kind of differences to it. So this is where, well, we still need our hands on, on the wallet. We download the wallet. And within that wallet, there is a... Um, uh, uh, a PEM file, okay? So there's kind of a, an encrypted file that's needed in order to do that connection. And there's a kind of a password associated with that, which you'll get from your DBA. And that's just the one that, that I actually have in, in this particular kind of scenario on it. So what we need to do is we need to specify where that PEM file is. And we also need to specify where the connection details are actually stored and pass in the, the, the password for that wallet. And once we run that, you know, everything actually runs exactly the same. Now, I'm not going to spool all the data out and we're still using the Tick database client. Now, if I try to take that exact same code and run it against the, the cloud database, but this time I want to use the Tick database because maybe our applications actually need it. There's a couple of things that are needed. One is that we need to specify where the client software is actually installed. 
uh, and from there it'll actually pick up the the directory where the wallets are actually stored as well so we need to be able to kind of specify all that so by doing this we're initializing it um, now if you run this in the same sessions or set of code or applications as the thing client you're going to get an error message because now they don't kind of live side by side right so we need to kind of separate those in environments out so you you know, if, if there's scenarios where you can run with the thing client and other scenarios where you can run with the tick client, you're going to need to look at how to separate out that code. Now, in most scenarios, you're probably going to be fine. But when you if you do encounter those, you need to have it in separate kind of um, uh, modules or whatever else separated out. Now, what I have here is because I'm in the one session, we get to run that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, restart my, my kernel so that we can kind of eliminate that and we have a clean environment we just give that a second to complete so we initiate what it is and then we go back to just saying what the username password is and you define you know what the pluggable db or the service that we're actually dealing with uh, in in relation to that so uh, when we run it this time what we get is we get the same kind of details coming out and we get to see this time it's saying false now one of the things that you may have noticed that there is a slight time lag between uh, present, presenting the results so because there's an extra layer of software it needs to go through you're always going to have a slight impact on it now from my uh, uh, kind of testing with lots of other kind of uh, code python code that i have to like, use in this and i've converted it over there is a kind of a, a noticeable kind of uh, time improvement or speed improvement with using the new um, Python library for Oracle. Now everything I've shown you is available on the blog post which I have a, a link to here and I'll put this in into the, the video uh, description so you'll be able to get a look at that as well as some kind of instructions to do with you know, installations going to be basic to the home page for it and there's also to the documentation uh, which is actually really really good documentation so if you've got any questions let me know uh, if you kind of come across anything interesting let me know uh, and you know there on the github repository for for uh, oracle db they also have uh, a facility for you to submit questions and get support and and get feedback so hopefully you found this useful with getting connected to your oracle database whether it's on premises or if you're using one of the cloud hosted databases